This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Lehman, MemeThief.com. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso, Cantos 1 to 5. Paradiso, Canto 1. The glory of him who moveth everything doth penetrate the universe and shine in one part more and in another less. Within that heaven which most his light receives was I, and things beheld which to repeat, nor knows, nor can, who from above descends. Because in drawing near to its desire, our intellect engulfs itself so far that after it the memory cannot go. Truly, whatever of the holy realm I had the power to treasure in my mind shall now become the subject of my song. O oh, good Apollo, for this last emprise, make of me such a vessel of thy power, as giving the beloved laurel asks. One summit of Parnassus hitherto has been enough for me, but now with both I needs must enter the arena left. Enter into my bosom thou, and breathe, as at the time when Marsyas thou didst draw out of the scabbard of those limbs of his. O oh, power divine, Lent'st thou thyself to me, so that the shadow of the blessed realm, stamped in my brain, I can make manifest. Thou'lt see me come unto thy darling tree, and crown myself thereafter with those leaves of which the theme and thou shall make me worthy. So seldom, father, do we gather them for triumph, or of Caesar, or of poet, the fault and shame of human inclinations that the Penean foliage should bring forth joy to the joyous Delphic deity when any one it makes to thirst for it. A little spark is followed by great flame. Perchance with better voices after me shall prayer be made that Syra may respond. To mortal men by passages diverse uprises the world's lamp, but by that one which circles four uniteth with three crosses. With better course and with a better star conjoined it issues, and the mundane wax tempers and stamps more after its own fashion. Almost that passage had made morning there and evening here, and there was wholly white that hemisphere and black the other part, when Beatrice, towards the left-hand side, I saw turned round, and gazing at the sun, Never did eagle fasten so upon it. And even as a second ray is wont to issue from the first and reascend, like to a pilgrim who would fain return, thus of her action, through the eyes infused in my imagination, mine I made, and sunward fixed mine eyes beyond our want. There much is lawful which is here unlawful unto our powers, by virtue of the place made for the human species as its own. Not long I bore it, nor so little while, but I beheld it sparkle round about, like iron that comes molten from the fire, and suddenly it seemed that day to day was added, as if he who has the power had with another sun the heaven adorned. With eyes upon the everlasting wheels stood Beatrice all intent, and I, on her, fixing my vision from above removed, such that her aspect inwardly became as Glaucus, tasting of the herb that made him peer of the other gods beneath the sea. To represent transhumanize in words impossible were. The example, then, suffice him for whom grace the experience reserves. If I was merely what of me thou newly createdst, love who governest the heaven, thou knowest who didst lift me with thy light. 
when now the wheel, which thou dost make eternal, desiring thee, made me attentive to it, by harmony thou dost modulate and measure, then seemed to me so much of heaven enkindled by the sun's flame, that neither, neither rain nor river e'er made a lake so widely spread abroad. The newness of the sound and the great light kindled in me a longing for their cause, never before with such acuteness felt, whence she, who saw me as I saw myself, to quiet in me my perturbed mind, opened her mouth, ere I did mine to ask, and she began, Thou makest thyself so dull with false imagining, that thou seest not what thou wouldst see if thou hadst shaken it off. Thou art not upon earth, as thou believest, but lightning, fleeing its appropriate sight, ne'er ran as thou, who thitherward returnest. If of my former doubt I was divested by these brief little words more smiled than spoken, I in a new one was the more ensnared, and said, Already did I rest content from great amazement, but am now amazed in what way I transcend these bodies light. Whereupon she, after a pitying sigh, her eyes directed towards me with that look a mother casts on a delirious child, and she began, All things, whate'er they be, have order among themselves, and this is form that makes the universe resemble God. Here do the higher creatures see the footprints of the eternal power, which is the end whereto is made the law already mentioned. In the order that I speak of are inclined all natures, by their destinies diverse, more or less near unto their origin. Hence they move onward unto ports diverse, o'er the great sea of being, and each one with instinct given it which bears it on. This bears away the fire towards the moon. This is in mortal hearts the mode of power that binds together and unites the earth. Nor only the created things that are without intelligence this bow shoots forth, but those that have both intellect and love. The providence that regulates all this makes with its light the heaven forever quiet, wherein that turns which has the greatest haste. And thither now, as to a sight decreed, bears us away the virtue of that cord, which aims its arrows at a joyous mark. True is it, that as oftentimes the form accords not with the intention of the art, because in answering is matter deaf, so likewise from this course doth deviate sometimes the creature who the power possesses, though thus impelled, to swerve some other way, in the same wise as one may see the fire fall from a cloud, if the first impetus earthward is wrested by some false delight. Thou shouldst not wonder more, if well I judge, at thine ascent, than at a rivulet from some high mount descending to the lowland. Marvel it would be in thee, if deprived of hindrance, thou wert seated down below, as if on earth the living fire were quiet. Thereat she heavenward turned again her face. Paradiso, Canto 2 O ye, who in some pretty little boat, eager to listen, have been following behind my ship, that singing sails along, turn back to look again upon your shores. Do not put out to sea, lest peradventure in losing me you might yourselves be lost. The sea I sail has never yet been passed. Minerva breathes and pilots me Apollo, and Muses nine point out to me the bears. Ye other few who have the neck uplifted betimes to the bread of angels, upon which one liveth here, and grows not sated by it. Well may you launch upon the deep salt sea your vessel, keeping still my wake before you, 
upon the water that grows smooth again. Those glorious ones who unto Colchos passed were not so wonderstruck as you shall be. When Jason they beheld a plowman made, the con created in perpetual thirst for the realm deiform did bear us on, as swift almost as ye the heavens behold. Upwards gazed Beatrice, and I at her, and in such space perchance as strikes a bolt and flies, and from the notch unlocks itself. Arrived I saw me where a wondrous thing drew to itself my sight, and therefore she, for whom no care of mine could be concealed, towards me turning, blithe as beautiful, said unto me, Fix gratefully thy mind on God, who unto the first star has brought us. It seemed to me a cloud encompassed us, luminous, dense, consolidated and bright, as adamant on which the sun is striking. Into itself did the eternal pearl receive us, even as water doth receive a ray of light, remaining still unbroken. If I was body, and we here conceive not how one dimension tolerates another, which needs must be if body enter body, more the desire should be enkindled in us, that essence to behold, wherein is seen how God and our own nature were united. There will be seen what we receive by faith, not demonstrated, but self-evident, in guise of the first truth that man believes. I made reply, Madonna, as devoutly as most I can do, I give thanks to him who has removed me from the mortal world. But tell me what the dusky spots may be upon this body which below on earth make people tell that fabulous tale of Cain. Somewhat she smiled, and then, if the opinion of mortals be erroneous, she said, where'er the key of sense doth not unlock, certes the shafts of wonder should not pierce thee now, for as much as, following the senses, thou seest that the reason has short wings. But tell me what thou thinkst of it thyself. And I, what seems to us up here diverse, is caused, I think, by bodies rare and dense. And she, right truly shall thou see immersed in error thy belief, if well thou hearest the argument that I shall make against it. Lights many the eighth sphere displays to you, which in their quality and quantity may noted be of aspects different. If this were caused by rare and dense alone, one only virtue would there be in all, or more or less diffused or equally. Virtues diverse must be perforce the fruits of formal principles, and these, save one, of course would by thy reasoning be destroyed. Besides, if rarity were of this dimness, the cause thou askest either through and through this planet thus attenuate were of matter, or else, as in a body is apportioned the fat and lean, so in like manner this would in its volume interchange the leaves. Were it the former, in the sun's eclipse it would be manifest by the shining through of light, as through aught tenuous interfused. This is not so, hence we must scan the other. And if it chance the other I demolish, then falsified will thy opinion be. But if this rarity go not through and through, there needs must be a limit, beyond which is contrary prevents the further passing, and thence the foreign radiance is reflected, even as a color cometh back from glass, the which behind itself concealeth lead. Now thou wilt say the sunbeam shows itself more dimly there than in the other parts, by being there reflected farther back. From this reply, experiment will free thee, 
if ever thou try it, which is wont to be the fountain to the rivers of your arts. Three mirrors shalt thou take, and two remove alike from thee, the other more remote between the former two shall meet thine eyes. Turn toward these, cause that behind thy back be placed a light, illuming the three mirrors and coming back to thee by all reflected. Though in its quantity be not so ample the image most remote, there shalt thou see how it perforce is equally resplendent. Now, as beneath the touches of warm rays, naked the subject of the snow remains, both of its former color and its cold, thee thus remaining in thy intellect will I inform with such a living light that it shall tremble in its aspect to thee. Within the heaven of the divine repose revolves a body in whose virtue lies the being of whatever it contains. The following heaven that has so many eyes divides this being by essences diverse, distinguished from it and by it contained. The other spheres, by various differences, all the distinctions which they have within them, dispose unto their ends and their effects. Thus do these organs of the world proceed, as thou perceivest now from grade to grade, since from above they take and act beneath. Observe me well, how through this place I come unto the truth that thou wishest, that hereafter thou mayest alone know how to keep the ford, power and motion of the holy spheres, as from the artisan the hammer's craft, forth from the blessed motors must proceed. The heaven, which lights so manifold make fair, from the intelligence profound which turns it, the image takes, and makes of it a seal. And even as the soul within your dust, through members different and accommodated to faculties diverse, expands itself. So likewise, this intelligence diffuses its virtue multiplied among the stars, itself revolving on its unity. Virtue diverse doth a diverse alloyage make with the precious body that it quickens, in which, as life in you, it is combined. From the glad nature whence it is derived, the mingled virtue through the body shines, even as gladness through the living pupil. From this proceeds whatever from light to light appeareth different, not from dense and rare. This is the formal principle that produces, according to its goodness, dark and bright. Paradiso, Canto Three. That sun, which erst with love my bosom warmed, of beauty of truth had unto me discovered by proving and reproving the sweet aspect. And, that I might confess myself convinced and confident so far as was befitting, I lifted more erect my head to speak. But there appeared a vision, which withdrew me so close to it in order to be seen, that my confession I remembered not. Such as through polished and transparent glass, or waters crystalline and undisturbed, but not so deep as that their bed be lost. Come back again the outlines of our faces, so feeble that a pearl on forehead white comes not less speedily unto our eyes. Such saw I many faces prompt to speak, so that I ran in error opposite to that which kindled love twixt man and fountain. As soon as I became aware of them, esteeming them as mirrored semblances, to see of whom they were, mine eyes I turned, and nothing saw, and once more turned them forward, direct into the light of my sweet guide, who, smiling, kindled in her holy eyes. Marvel thou not, she said to me, because I smile at this thy puerile conceit, since on the truth it trusts not yet its foot, but turns thee as tis wont on emptiness. True substances are these which thou beholdest, here relegate for breaking of some vow. Therefore speak with them, listen and believe, for the true light, which giveth peace to them, permits them not to turn from it their feet. 
and I, under the shade that seemed most wishful to speak, directed me, and I began, as one whom too great eagerness bewilders, O oh, well-created spirit, who in the rays of life eternal thus the sweetness tastes, which being untasted ne'er is comprehended, grateful twill be to me, if thou content me both with thy name and with thy destiny. Whereat she promptly, and with laughing eyes, our charity doth never shut the doors against a just desire, except as one who wills that all her court be like herself. I was a virgin sister in the world, and if thy mind doth contemplate me well, the being more fair will not conceal me from thee. But thou shalt recognize I am Picarda, who stationed here among these other blessed, myself am blessed in the slow sphere. All our affections that alone inflamed are in the pleasure of the Holy Ghost, rejoice at being of his order formed. And this allotment, which appears so low, therefore is given us, because our vows have been neglected, and in some part void. Whence I to her. In your miraculous aspects there shines I know not what of the divine, which doth transform you from our first conceptions. Therefore I was not swift in my remembrance. But what thou tellest me now aids me so, that the refiguring is easier to me. But tell me, ye who in this place are happy, are you desirous of a higher place, to see more, or to make yourselves more friends? First, with those other shades, she smiled a little. Thereafter answered me so full of gladness, she seemed to burn in the first fire of love. Brother, our will is quieted by virtue of charity, that which makes us wish alone for what we have, nor gives us thirst for more. If to be more exalted we aspired, discordant would our aspirations be unto the will of him who here secludes us, which thou shalt see finds no place in these circles, if being in charity is needful here. And if thou lookest well into its nature, nay, tis essential to this blessed existence to keep itself within the will divine, whereby our very wishes are made one, so that as we are stationed above station throughout this realm, to all the realm tis pleasing, as to the king, who makes his will our will, and his will is our peace. This is the sea to which is moving onward whatsoever it doth create, and all that nature makes. Then it was clear to me how everywhere in heaven is paradise, although the grace of good supreme there reign not in one measure. But as it comes to pass, if one food sates, and for another still remains the longing, we ask for this, and that decline with thanks. E'en thus did I, with gesture and with word, to learn from her what was the web wherein she did not ply the shuttle to the end. A perfect life, and merit high in heaven, a lady o'er us, said she, by whose rule down in your world they vest and veil themselves, that until death they may both watch and sleep beside that spouse who every vow accepts, which charity conformeth to his pleasure. To follow her in girlhood from the world, I fled, and in her habit shut myself, and pledged me to the pathway of her sect. Then men accustomed unto evil more than unto good, from the sweet cloister tore me. God knows what afterward my life became. This other splendor, which to thee reveals itself on my right side, and is enkindled with all the illumination of our sphere. What of myself, I say, applies to her. A nun she was, and likewise from her head was ta'en the sh shadow of the sacred wimple. But when she too was to the world returned against her wishes and against good usage of the heart's veil, she never was divested. Of great Costanza, this is the effulgence, who from the second will of Suabia brought forth a third and latest puissance. Thus unto me she spake, 
and then began Ave Maria singing, and in singing vanished, as through deep water something heavy. My sight, that followed her as long a time as it was possible, when it had lost her, turned round unto the mark of more desire, and wholly unto Beatrice reverted. But she, such lightnings, flashed into mine eyes, that at the first my sight endured it not. And this, in questioning, more backward made me. Paradiso, Canto Four. Between two viands, equally removed and tempting, a free man would die of hunger ere either he could bring unto his teeth. So would a lamb between the ravenings of two fierce wolves stand fearing both alike, and so would stand a dog between two does. Hence, if I held my peace, myself I blame not, impelled in equal measure by my doubts, since it must be so, nor do I commend. I held my peace, but my desire was painted upon my face, and questioning with that more fervent far than by articulate speech. Beatrice did as Daniel had done, relieving Nebuchadnezzar from the wrath which rendered him unjustly merciless, and said, Well see I how attracteth thee one and the other wish, so that thy care binds itself, so that forth it does not breathe. Thou arguest, if good will be permanent, the violence of others. For what reason doth it decrease the measure of my merit? Again for doubting furnish the occasion souls seeming to return unto the stars, according to the sentiment of Plato. These are the questions which upon thy wish are thrusting equally, and therefore first will I treat that which hath the most of gall. He of the seraphim, most absorbed in God, Moses and Samuel, and whichever John thou mayest select, I say, and even Mary, have not in any other heaven their seats, than have those spirits that just appeared to thee, nor of existence more or fewer years. But all make beautiful the primal circle, and have sweet life in different degrees, by feeling more or less the eternal breath. They show themselves here, not because allotted this fear has been to them, but to give sign of the celestial which is least exalted. To speak thus is adapted to your mind, since only through the sense it apprehendeth what then it worthy makes of intellect. On this account, the scripture condescends unto your faculties, and feet and hands to God attributes, and means something else. And Holy Church, under an aspect human, Gabriel and Michael represent to you, and him who made Tobias whole again. That which Timaeus argues of the soul doth not resemble that which here is seen, because it seems that as he speaks, he thinks. He says the soul unto its star returns, believing it to have been severed thence whenever nature gave it as a form. Perhaps his doctrine is of other guise than the words sound, and possibly may be with meaning that is not to be derided. If he doth mean, that to these wheels return the honor of their influence and the blame. Perhaps his bow doth hit upon some truth. This principle ill understood once warped the whole world nearly, till it went astray invoking Jove and Mercury and Mars. The other doubt which doth disquiet thee, less venom has, for its malevolence could never lead the other where from me. That as unjust our justice should appear in eyes of mortals is an argument of faith and not of sin heretical. But still, that your perception may be able to thoroughly penetrate this verity, as thou desirest, I will satisfy thee. If it be violence when he who suffers cooperates not with him who uses force, these souls were not on that account excused. For will is never quenched unless it will, but operates as nature doth in fire if violence a thousand times distort it. Hence, if it yieldeth more or less, it seconds the force, and these have done so, having power of turning back unto the holy place. If their will had been perfect, like to that which Lawrence fast upon his gridiron held, and Mutius made severe to his own hand, 
It would have urged them back along the road whence they were dragged, as soon as they were free. But such a solid will is all too rare. And by these words, if thou hast gathered them as thou shouldst do, the argument is refuted that would have still annoyed thee many times. But now another passage runs across before thine eyes, and such that by thyself thou couldst not thread it ere thou wouldst be weary. I have for certain put into thy mind that soul beatified could never lie, for it is near the primal truth, and then thou, from Picarda, mightst have heard, Costanza kept affection for the veil, so that she seemeth here to contradict me. Many times, brother, has it come to pass, that to escape from peril, with reluctance that has been done it was not right to do, e'en as Alcmeon, who being by his father thereto entreated, his own mother slew, not to lose pity, pitiless became. At this point I desire thee to remember that force with will commingles, and they cause that the offences cannot be excused. Will absolute consenteth not to evil, but in so far consenteth as it fears, if it refrain, to fall into more harm. Hence, when Picarda uses this expression, she meaneth the will absolute, and I the other, so that both of us speak truth. Such was the flowing of the holy river that issued from the fount whence springs all truth. This put to rest my wishes one and all. O love of the first lover, O divine, said I forthwith, whose speech inundates me and warms me so, it more and more revives me. My own affection is not so profound as to suffice in rendering grace for grace. Let him who sees and can thereto respond. Well, I perceive that never sated is our intellect unless the truth illume it, beyond which nothing true expands itself. It rests therein as wild beast in his lair, when it attains it, and it can attain it. If not, then each desire would frustrate be. Therefore springs up, and in fashion of a shoot, doubt at the foot of truth. And this is nature, which to the top, from height to height, impels us. This doth invite me, this assurance give me with reverence, lady, to inquire of you another truth, which is obscure to me. I wish to know, if man can satisfy you for broken vows with other good deeds, so that in your balance they will not be light. Beatrice gazed upon me with her eyes full of the sparks of love, and so divine that, overcome my power, I turned my back and almost lost myself with eyes downcast. Paradiso, Canto V If in the heat of love I flame upon thee beyond the measure that on earth is seen, so that the valor of thine eyes I vanquish, marvel thou not thereat, for this proceeds from perfect sight, which as it apprehends to the good apprehended moves its feet. Well I perceive how is already shining into thine intellect the eternal light, that only seen in kindles always love. And if some other thing your love seduce, tis nothing but a vestige of the same, ill understood, which there is shining through. Thou fain wouldst know, if with another service her broken vow can such return be made as to secure the soul from further claim. This canto thus did Beatrice begin, and, as a man who breaks not off his speech, continued thus her holy argument. The greatest gift that in his largesse God creating made, and unto his own goodness nearest conformed, and that which he doth prize most highly is the freedom of the will, wherewith the creatures of intelligence, both all and only, were and are endowed. Now wilt thou see, if thence thou reasonest, the high worth of a vow, if it he made so that when thou consentest, God consents, for closing between God and man the compact, a sacrifice is of this treasure made, such as I say, and made by its own act. What can be rendered then as compensation? 
thinkest thou to make good use of what thou hast offered? With gains ill-gotten thou wouldst do good deed. Now art thou certain of the greater point. But because holy church in this dispenses, which seems against the truth which I have shown thee, behooves thee still to sit a while at table, because the solid food which thou hast taken requireth further aid for thy digestion. Open thy mind to that which I reveal, and fix it there within, for tis not knowledge that having heard without retaining it. In the essence of this sacrifice, two things convene together, and the one is that of which tis made, the other is the agreement. This last forevermore is cancelled not, unless complied with, and concerning this with such precision has above been spoken. Therefore it was enjoined upon the Hebrews to offer still, though sometimes what was offered might be commuted, as thou oughtst to know. The other, which is known to thee as matter, may well indeed be such that one errs not, if it for other matter be exchanged. But let none shift the burden on his shoulder at his arbitrament, without the turning both of the white and of the yellow key. And every permutation deem as foolish, if in the substitute, the thing relinquished, as the four is in six, be not contained. Therefore, whatever thing has so great weight and value that it drags down every balance, cannot be satisfied with other spending. Let mortals never take a vow in jest. Be faithful and not blind in doing that, as Jephthah was in his first offering, who more beseemed to say, I have done wrong than to do worse by keeping, and as foolish thou the great leader of the Greeks wilt find, whence wept Iphigenia her fair face, and made for her both wise and simple weep, who heard such kind of worship spoken of. Christians, be ye more serious in your movements. Be ye not like a feather at each wind, and think not every water washes you. Ye have the Old and the New Testament, and the pastor of the church, who guideth you. Let this suffice you unto your salvation. If evil appetite cry aught else to you, be ye as men, and not as silly sheep, so that the Jew among you may not mock you. Be ye not as the lamb that doth abandon its mother's milk, and frolicsome and simple combats at its own pleasure with itself. Thus Beatrice to me, even as I write it, that all desireful turned herself again to that part where the world is most alive. Her silence and her change of countenance, silence imposed upon my eager mind, that had already in advance new questions. And as an arrow that upon the mark strikes ere the bowstring quiet hath become, so did we speed into the second realm. My lady there, so joyful I beheld, as into the brightness of that heaven she entered, more luminous thereat the planet grew. And if the star itself was changed and smiled, what became I, who by my nature am exceeding mutable in every guise? As in a fish pond which is pure and tranquil, the fishes draw to that which from without comes in such fashion that their food they deem it, so I beheld more than a thousand splendors drawing towards us, and in each was heard, Lo, this is she who shall increase our love. And as each one was coming unto us, full of beatitude the shade was seen, by the effulgence clear that issued from it. Think, reader, if what here is just beginning, no farther should proceed, how thou wouldst have an agonizing need of knowing more. And of thyself thou see how I, from these, was in desire of hearing their conditions, as they unto mine eyes were manifest. O thou well-born, unto whom grace concedes to see the thrones of the eternal triumph, or ever yet the warfare be abandoned, with light that through the whole of heaven is spread, kindled are we, and hence if thou desirest to know of us, at thine own pleasure sate thee. Thus, by some one among those holy spirits, was spoken. And by Beatrice, speak, speak securely, 
and believe them even as gods. Will I perceive how thou dost nest thyself in thine own light, and drawest it from thine eyes, because they coruscate when thou dost smile, but know not who thou art, nor why thou hast, spirit august, thy station in the sphere that veils itself to men in alien rays? This said I in direction of the light which first had spoken to me, whence it became by far more loosened than it was before. Even as the sun that doth conceal himself by too much light, when heat has worn away the tempering influence of the vapors dense. By greater rapture, thus concealed itself in its own radiance, the figure saintly, and thus close, close and folded, answered me, in fashion as the following canto sings. End of Paradiso, Cantos 1 to 5. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Jefferson City, Missouri. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso, Canto 6 to Canto 11. Paradiso, Canto 6. After that Constantine the eagle turned against the course of heaven, which it had followed behind the ancient who Lavinia took. Two hundred years and more the bird of God into the extreme of Europe held itself, near to the mountains whence it issued first. And under shadow of the sacred plumes it governed there the world from hand to hand, and changing thus upon mine own alighted. Caesar I was, and am Justinian, who by the will of primal love I feel took from the laws the useless and redundant. And ere unto the work I was attent, one nature to exist in Christ, not more, believed, and with such faith was I contented. But blessed Agapetus, he who was the supreme pastor to the faith sincere, pointed me out the way by words of his. Him I believed, and what was his assertion I now see clearly, even as thou seest, each contradiction to be false and true. As soon as with the church I moved my feet, God in his grace it pleased with this high task to inspire me and I gave me wholly to it. And to my Belisarius I commended the arms to which was heaven's right hand so joined, it was a signal that I should propose. Now here to the first question terminates my answer, but the character thereof constrains me to continue with a sequel. In order that thou see with how great reason men move against the sacred sacrosanct, both who appropriate and who oppose it, behold how great a power has made it worthy of reverence, beginning from the hour when Pallas died to give it sovereignty. Thou knowest it made an Alba its abode, three hundred years and upward, till at last the three to three fought for it yet again. Thou knowest what it achieved from Sabine wrong, down to Lucretia's sorrow in seven kings, or coming round about the neighboring nations. Thou knowest what it achieved, borne by the Romans, illustrious against Brennus, against Pyrrhus, against the other princes and confederates, Torquatus thence and Quinctius, who from locks unkempt was named Deci and Fabi, receive the fame I willingly embalm. It struck to earth the pride of the Arabians, who following Hannibal had passed across the Alpine ridges, Po, from which thou glidest. Beneath it triumphed while they yet were young, Pompey and Scipio, and to the hill, beneath which thou wast born it bitter seemed. Then near unto the time when heaven had willed to bring the whole world to its mood serene, did Caesar by the will of Rome assume it. What it achieved from Var unto the Rhine, Iseri beheld, and Saoni beheld the same, and every valley whence the Rhone is filled. What it achieved when it had left Ravenna, and left the Rubicon, was such a flight that neither tongue nor pen could follow it. Round towards Spain it wheeled its legions, then toward Durazzo and Pharsalia smote, that to the Calid Nile was felt the pain. Antandros and the Simios, whence it started, it saw again, and there where Hector lies and ill for Ptolemy then roused itself. From thence it came like lightning upon Juba, then wheeled itself again into your west, where the Pompeian clarion it heard. From what it wrought with the next standard-bearer, Brutus and Cassius howl in hell together, and Modena and Perugia dolent were. Still doth the mournful Cleopatra weep, because thereof who fleeing from before it, 
took from the adder sudden and black death. With him it ran even to the Red Sea shore. With him it placed the world in so great peace that unto Janus was his temple closed. But what the standard that has made me speak, achieved before and after should achieve, throughout the mortal realm that lies beneath it, becometh an appearance mean and dim, if in the hand of the third Caesar seen with eye unclouded and affection pure, because the living justice that inspires me granted it, in the hand of him I speak of, the glory of doing vengeance for its wrath. Now here attend to what I answer thee. Later it ran with Titus to do vengeance, upon the vengeance of the ancient sin. And when the tooth of Lombardy had bitten the holy church, then underneath its wings did Charlemagne victorious succor her. Now hast thou power to judge of such as those whom I accuse above and of their crimes, which are the cause of all your miseries. To the public standard one the yellow lilies opposes, the other claims it for a party, so that tis hard to see which sins the most. Let, let the Ghibellines ply their handicraft beneath some other standard, for this ever ill follows he who it and justice parts. And let not this new Charles e'er strike it down, he and his gulfs, but let him fear the talons that from a nobler lion stripped the fell. Already oftentimes the sons have wept the father's crime, and let him not believe that God will change his scutcheon for the lilies. This little planet doth adorn itself with the good spirits that have active been, that fame and honor might come after them. And whensoever the desires mount thither, thus deviating must perforce the rays of the true love less vividly mount upward. But in commensuration of our wages, with our desert is portion of our joy, because we see them neither less nor greater. Herein doth living justice sweeten so affection in us that for evermore it cannot warp to any iniquity. Voices diverse make up sweet melodies, so in this life of ours the seats diverse render sweet harmony among these spheres, and in the compass of this present pearl shineth the sheen of Romeo, of whom the grand and beauteous work was ill rewarded. But the Provencals who against him wrought, they have not laugh, and therefore ill goes he, who makes his hurt of the good deeds of others. Four daughters, and each one of them a queen, had Raymond Berenger, and this for him did Romeo, a poor man and a pilgrim. And then the malicious words incited him to summon to a reckoning this just man, who rendered to him seven and five for ten. And he departed poor and stricken in years, and if the world could know the heart he had, in begging bit by bit his livelihood, though much it laud him, it would laud him more. End of Canto 6 Paradiso Canto 7 O sana sanctus du saboth! Super lustrans claretate to a felice signis hora malahoth. In this wise, to his melody returning, the substance upon which a double light doubles itself was seen by me to sing, and to their dance this and the others moved, and in the manner of swift hurrying sparks veiled themselves from me with a sudden distance. Doubting was I, and saying, Tell her, tell her, within me, tell her, saying, Tell my lady, who slakes my thirst with her sweet effluences. And yet that reverence which doth lord it over the whole of me, only by B and I C E, bowed me again like unto one who drowses. Short while did Beatrice endure me thus, and she began lighting me with a smile, such as would make one happy in the fire. According to infallible advisement, after what manner a just vengeance justly could be avenged has put thee upon thinking. But I will speedily thy mind unloose. And do thou listen, for these words of mine of a great doctrine will a present make thee. By not enduring on the power that wills, curb for his good, that man who ne'er was born, damning himself, damned all his progeny. Whereby the human species down below lay sick for many centuries in great error, till to descend it pleased the word of God, to where the nature from which its own maker estranged itself, he joined to him person by the sole act of his eternal love. Now unto what is said direct thy sight, this nature when united to its maker, such as created was sincere and good, but by itself alone was banished forth from paradise, because it turned aside out of the way of truth and of its life. Therefore the penalty the cross held out, if measured by the nature thus assumed, none ever yet with so great justice stung, and none was ever of so great injustice, considering who the person was that suffered, within whom such a nature was contracted. From one act, therefore, issued things diverse. To God and to the Jews one death was pleasing. Earth trembled at it, and the heaven was opened. It should no longer now seem difficult to thee, 
when it is said that a just vengeance by a just court was afterward avenged. But now do I behold thy mind entangled, from thought to thought within a knot, from which with great desire it waits to free itself. Thou sayest, Well, discern I what I hear, but it is hidden from me why God willed for our redemption only this one mode. Buried remaineth, brother, this decree unto the eyes of every one whose nature is in the flame of love not yet adult. Verily, insomuch as at this mark one gaze is long and little is discerned, wherefore this mode was worthiest, I will say, goodness divine, from which itself doth spurn all envy, burning in itself so sparkles at the eternal beauties it unfolds. Whate'er from this immediately distills has afterwards no end, for ne'er removed is its impression when it sets its seal. Whate'er from this immediately rains down is wholly free, because it is not subject unto the influences of novel things. The more conformed thereto, the more it pleases, for the blessed ardor that irradiates all things, in that most like itself is most vivacious. With all of these things has advantaged been the human creature, and if one be wanting from his nobility, he needs must fall. Tis sin alone which doth disfranchise him, and render him unlike the good supreme, so that he little with its light is blanched. And to his dignity no more returns, unless he fill up where transgression empties, with righteous pains for criminal delights. Your nature, when it sinned so utterly in its own seed out of these dignities, even as out of paradise was driven, nor could itself recover if thou noticed with nicest subtlety by any way, except by passing one of these two fords. Either that God through clemency alone had pardon granted, or that man himself had satisfaction for his folly made. Fix now thine eye deep into the abyss of the eternal counsel, to my speech, as far as may be fastened steadfastly. Man in his limitations had not power to satisfy, not having power to sink in his humility obeying then. Far as he disobeying thought to rise, and for this reason man has been from power of satisfying by himself excluded. Therefore it God behooved in his own ways, man to restore unto his perfect life, I say in one or else in both of them. But since the action of the doer is so much more grateful, as it more presents the goodness of the heart from which it issues, goodness divine, that doth imprint the world, has been contented to proceed by each, and all its ways lift you up again. Nor twixt the first day and the final night such high and such magnificent proceeding by one or by the other was or shall be. For God more bounteous was himself to give, to make man able to uplift himself, than if he only of himself had pardoned. And all the other modes were insufficient for justice, were it not the Son of God himself had humbled to become incarnate. Now to fill fully each desire of thine, return I to elucidate one place, in order that thou there mayest see as I do. Thou sayest, I see the air, I see the fire, the water and the earth and all their mixtures come to corruption and short while endure, and these things notwithstanding were created. Therefore, if that which I have said were true, they should have been secure against corruption. The angels, brother, and the land sincere in which thou art created may be called just as they are in their entire existence. But all the elements which thou hast named, and all those things which out of them are made, by a created virtue are informed. Created was the matter which they have, created was the informing influence within these stars that round about them go. The soul of every brute and of the plants by its potential temperament attracts the ray and motion of the holy lights. But your own life immediately inspires supreme beneficence, and enamors it, so with herself it evermore desires her. And thou from this mayest argue furthermore your resurrection, if thou think again how human flesh was fashioned at that time, when the first parents, both of them, were made. End of Canto 7 Paradiso, Canto 8 The world used in its peril to believe that the fair Cypria delirious love rayed out in the third epicycle turning, wherefore not only unto her paid honor of sacrifices and of votive cry the ancient nations in the ancient error, but both Dione honored they and Cupid that as her mother and this one as her son, and said that he had sat in Dido's lap, and they took from her whence I beginning take, took the denomination of the star that woos the sun, now following, now in front. I was not aware of our ascending to it, but of our being in it gave full faith, my lady whom I saw more beauteous grow. And as within a flame a spark is seen, and as within a voice a voice discerned, when one is steadfast and one comes and goes, 
Within that light beheld I other lamps move in a circle, speeding more and less, methinks in measure of their inward vision. From a cold cloud descended never winds, or visible or not so rapidly, they would not laggard and impeded seem. To any one who had those lights divine seen come towards us, leaving the gyration begun at first in the high seraphim, and behind those that most in front appeared, sounded Osana, so that never since to hear again was I without desire. Then unto us more nearly one approached, and it alone began, We all are ready unto thy pleasure, that thou joy in us. We turn around with the celestial princes, one gyre and one gyration and one thirst, in whom thou in the world of old didst say, Ye who intelligent the third heaven are moving, and are so full of love to pleasure thee, a little quiet will not be less sweet. After these eyes of mine themselves had offered unto my lady reverently, and she, content and certain of herself, had made them, back to the light they turned, which so great promise made of itself, and say, Who art thou? was my voice, imprinted with a great affection. Oh, how and how much I beheld it grow, with the new joy that superadded was unto its joys, as soon as I had spoken. Thus changed, it said to me, the world possessed me short time below, and if it had been more, much evil will be which would not have been. My gladness keepeth me concealed from thee, which rayeth round about me, and doth hide me, like as a creature swathed in its own silk. Much didst thou love me, and thou hadst good reason, for had I been below I should have shown thee somewhat beyond the foliage of my love. That left-hand margin which doth bathe itself in roan, when it is mingled with the sorg, me for its lord awaited in due time. And that horn of Ausonio, which is towned with body, with Gaeta and Catona, whence Tronto and Verde in the sea disgorge, already flashed upon my brow the crown of that dominion which the Danube waters after the German borders it abandons, and beautiful Trinacria that is murky, twixt Patino and Peloro, on the gulf which greatest scathe from Joris doth receive not through Typhius, but through nascent sulphur, would have awaited her own monarch still, through me from Charles descended and from Rudolph. If evil lordship that exasperates ever the subject populations had not moved Palermo to the outcry of death, death, and if my brother could but this foresee, the greedy poverty of Catalonia, straight would he flee that it might not molest him. For verily tis needful to provide, through him or other, so that on his bark already freighted no more freight be placed. His nature, which from liberal covetous descended, such a soldiery would need as should not care for hoarding in a chest. Because I do believe the lofty joy thy speech infuses into me, my lord, where every good thing doth begin and end. Thou seest as I see it, the more grateful is it to me, and this too hold I dear, that gazing upon God thou dost discern it. Glad hast thou made me, so make clear to me, since speaking thou hast stirred me up to doubt, how from sweet seed can bitter issue forth. This I to him, and he to me, if I can show to thee a truth, to what thou askest, thy face thou'lt hold as thou dost hold thy back. The good which all the realm thou art ascending, turns and contents, maketh its providence to be a power unto these bodies vast, and not alone the natures are foreseen, within the mind that in itself is perfect, but they together with their preservation, for whatsoever thing this bow shoots forth, falls foreordained unto an end foreseen, even as a shaft directed to its mark. If that were not, the heaven which thou dost walk, would in such manner its effects produce, that they no longer would be arts, but ruins. This cannot be if the intelligences that keep these stars in motion are not maimed, and maimed the first that has not made them perfect. Wilt thou this truth have clearer made it to thee? And I, not so, for tis impossible, that nature tire, I see, in what is needful. Whence he again, now say, would it be worse for men on earth were they not citizens? Yes, I replied, and here I ask no reason. And can they be so, if below they live not diversely unto offices diverse? No, if your master writeth well for you. So came he with deductions to this point, then he concluded, Therefore it behooves the roots of your effects to be diverse. Hence one is Solonborn, another Cerses, another Melchizedek, and another he who flying through the air his son did lose. Revolving nature which a signet is to mortal wax, doth practice well her art, but not one in distinguished from another.
Thence happens it that Esau differeth in seed from Jacob, and Quirinius comes from Sire so vile that he is given to Mars. A generated nature its own way would always make like its progenitors, if providence divine were not triumphant. Now that which was behind thee is before thee, but that thou know that I with thee am pleased, with a corollary will I mantle thee. Evermore nature, if it fortune find discordant to it, like each other's seed out of its region maketh evil thrift. And if the world below would fix its mind on the foundation which is laid by nature, pursuing that, t'would have the people good. But you unto religion wrench aside him who was born to gird him with the sword, and make a king of him who is for sermons. Therefore your footsteps wander from the road. End of Canto 8 Paradiso, Canto 9 Beautiful Clements, after that thy Charles had me enlightened, he narrated to me the treacheries his siege should undergo, but said, Be still, and let the years roll round, so I can only say that lamentation legitimate shall follow on your wrongs. And of that holy light the life already had to the sun which fills it turned again, as to that good for which each thing sufficeth. Ah, souls deceived and creatures impious, who from such good do turn away your hearts, directing upon vanity your foreheads. And now, behold, another of those splendors approached me, and its will to pleasure me it signified by brightening outwardly. The eyes of Beatrice that fastened were upon me as before of dear assent to my desire assurance gave to me. Ah, bring swift compensation to my wish, thou blessed spirit, I said, and give me proof that what I think in thee I can reflect. Whereat the light, that still was new to me, out of its depths, whence it before was singing, as one delighted to do good, continued. Within that region of the land depraved of Italy that lies between Rialto and fountain heads of Brenta and of Piava, rises a hill and mounts not very high, wherefrom descended formerly a torch that made upon that region great assault. Out of one root were born both I and it. Kunitsa was I called, and here I shine, because the splendor of the star o'ercame me. But gladly to myself the cause I pardon of my allotment, and it does not grieve me, which would perhaps seem strong unto your vulgar. Of this so luculent and precious jewel, which of our heaven is nearest unto me, great fame remained, and ere it die away, this hundredth year shall yet quintupled be. See if man ought to make him excellent, so that another life the first may leave. And thus thinks not the present multitude, shut in by a DJ and Tagliamento, nor yet for being scourged is penitent. But soon twill be that Padia and the marsh will change the water that Vicenza bathes, because the folk are stubborn against duty. And where the Sile and Cagnano join, one lordeth it, and goes with lofty head, for catching whom e'en now the net is making. Feltro, moreover, of her impious pastor, shall weep the crime which shall so monstrous be, that for the like none ever entered Malta. Ample exceedingly would be the vat, that of the Ferrarese could hold the blood, and weary who should weigh it ounce by ounce, of which this courteous priest shall make a gift, to show himself a partisan, and such gifts will to the living of the land conform. Above us there are mirrors, thrones you call them, from which shines out on us God judicant, so that this utterance seems good to us. Here it was silent, and it had the semblance of being turned elsewhither, by the wheel on which it had entered as it was before. The other joy, already known to me, became a thing transplendent in my sight, as a fine ruby smitten by the sun. Through joy effulgence is acquired above, as here a smile, but down below the shade outwardly darkens, as the mind is sad. God seeth all things, and in him, blessed spirit, thy sight is, said I, so that never will of his can possibly from thee be hidden. Thy voice, then, that forever makes the heavens glad, with the singing of those holy fires which of their six wings make themselves a cowl. Wherefore does it not satisfy my longings? Indeed, I would not wait thy questioning if I in thee were as thou art in me. The greatest of the valleys where the water expands itself forthwith its words began, that sea accepted which the earth in garlands. Between discordant shores against the sun extends so far that it meridian makes where it was wont before to make the horizon. I was a dweller on that valley's shore, twixt Ebro and Magra, that with the journey short doth from the Tuscan part the Genoese, with the same sunset and the same sunrise nearly sit Bugia and the city whence I was, that with its blood once made the harbor hot. Folco that people called me, unto whom my name was known, and now with me this heaven imprints itself, as I did once with it. 
for more the daughter of Belus never burned, offending both Sicius and Creusa, than I so long as it became my locks, nor yet that Rodophian, who deluded was by Demophon, nor yet Alcides, when Aeoli he in his heart had locked. Yet here is no repenting, but we smile, not at the fault which comes not back to mind, but at the power which ordered and foresaw. Here we behold the art that doth adorn with such affection and the good discover whereby the world above turns that below. But that thou wholly satisfied mayst bear thy wishes hence, which in this sphere are born, still further to proceed behooveth me. Thou fain wouldst know who was within this light, that here beside me thus is scintillating, even as a sunbeam in the limpid water. Then know thou that within there is at rest Rahab, and being to our order joined, with her in its supremest grade tis sealed. Into this heaven where ends the shadowy cone, cast by your world before all other souls, first of Christ's triumph was she taken up. Full meet it was to leave her in some heaven, even as a palm of the high victory, which he acquired with one palm and the other. Because she favored the first glorious deed of Joshua upon the Holy Land, that little stirs the memory of the Pope. Thy city, which an offshoot is of him, who first upon his maker turned his back, and whose ambition is so sorely wept, brings forth and scatters the accursed flower which both the sheep and lambs hath led astray, since it has turned the shepherd to a wolf. For this the evangel and the mighty doctors are derelict, and only the decretals so steady that it shows upon their margins. On this are Pope and Cardinal's intent. Their meditations reach not Nazareth, there where his pinions Gabriel unfolded, but Vatican and the other parts elect of Rome, which have a cemetery been unto the soldiery that followed Peter, shall soon be free from this adultery. End of Canto 9 Paradiso, Canto 10 Looking into his son with all the love which each of them eternally breathes forth, the primal and unutterable power, what e'er before the mind or eye revolves with so much order made, there can be none who this beholds without enjoying him. Lift up then, reader, to the lofty wheels, with me thy vision straight unto that part, where the one motion on the other strikes, and there begin to contemplate with joy that master's art, who in himself so loves it that never doth his eye depart therefrom. Behold how from that point goes branching off the oblique circle, which conveys the planets to satisfy the world that calls upon them. And if their pathway were not thus inflected, much virtue in the heavens would be in vain, and almost every power below here dead. If from the straight line distant more or less were the departure, much would wanting be above and underneath of mundane order. Remain now, reader, still upon thy bench, in thought pursuing that which is foretasted, if thou wouldst jocund be instead of weary. I've set before thee, henceforth feed thyself, for to itself diverteth all my care, that theme whereof I had been made the scribe. The greatest of the ministers of nature, who with the power of heaven the world imprints and measures with his light the time for us, with that part which above is called to mind, conjoined along the spirals was revolving, where each time earlier he presents himself. And I was with him, but of the ascending I was not conscious, saving as a man of a first thought is conscious ere it come. And Beatrice, she who is seen to pass from good to better, and so suddenly that not by time her action is expressed, how loosened in herself must she have been, and what is in the sun wherein I entered, apparent not by color but by light? I, though I call on genius, art, and practice, cannot so tell it could be imagined, believe one can, and let him long to see it. And if our fantasies too lowly are for altitudes so great, it is no marvel, since o'er the sun was never I could go. Such in this place was the fourth family of the High Father, who forever sates it, showing how he breathes forth and how begets. And Beatrice began, Give thanks, give thanks unto the Son of Angels, who to the sensible one has raised thee by his grace. Never was heart of mortal so disposed to worship, nor to give itself to God with all its gratitude was it so ready, as at those words did I myself become, and all my love was so absorbed in him that in oblivion Beatrice was eclipsed. Nor this displeased her, but she smiled at it, so that the splendor of her laughing eyes my single mind on many things divided. Lights many saw I, vivid and triumphant, make us a center and themselves a circle, more sweet in voice than luminous in aspect. 
Thus girt about the daughter of Latona we sometimes see, when pregnant is the heir, so that it holds the thread which makes her zone. Within the court of heaven, whence I return, are many jewels found, so fair and precious they cannot be transported from the realm. And of them was the singing of those lights, who takes not wings that he may fly up thither, the tidings thence may from the dumb await. As soon as singing thus those burning suns had round about us whirled themselves three times, like unto stars neighboring the steadfast poles, ladies they seemed, not from the dance released, but who stopped short, in silence, listening till they have gathered the new melody. And within one I heard beginning, when the radiance of grace by which is kindled true love, and which thereafter grows by loving, within thee multiplied is so resplendent that it conducts thee upward by that stair, where without reascending none descends. Who should deny the wine out of his vial, unto thy thirst in liberty were not except as water which descends not seaward? Fain wouldst thou know with what plants is enflowered, this garland that encircles with the light, the lady fair who makes thee strong for heaven. Of the lambs was I of the holy flock, which Dominic conducteth by a road, where well one fattens if he strayeth not. He who is nearest me on the right, my brother and master was, and he, Albertus, is of Cologne, I, Thomas of Aquinium. If thou of all the others wouldst be certain, follow behind my speaking with thy sight, upward along the blessed garland turning, that next effulgence issues from the smile of Gratian, who assisted both the courts in such wise that it pleased in paradise. The other, which nearby adorns our choir, that Peter was, who, even as the poor widow, offered his treasure unto holy church. The fifth light, that among us is the fairest, breathes forth from such a love that all the world below is greedy to learn tidings of it. Within it is the lofty mind, where knowledge so deep was put, that if the true be true, to see so much there never rose a second. Thou seest next the luster of that taper which in the flesh below looked most within the angelic nature and its ministry. Within that other little light is smiling, the advocate of the Christian centuries, out of whose rhetoric Augustine was furnished. Now if thou trainest thy mind's eye along with light to light pursuant of my praise, with thirst already of the eighth thou waitest. By seeing every good therein exalts the sainted soul, which the fallacious world makes manifest to him who listeneth well. The body whence t'was hunted forth is lying down in Childaro, and from martyrdom and banishment it came unto this peace. See farther onward flamed the burning breath of Isidore, of Beda, and of Richard, who was in contemplation more than man. This whence to me returneth thy regard, the light is of a spirit unto whom in his grave meditations death seemed slow. It is the light eternal of Sigir, who reading lectures in the street of straw did syllogize invidious verities. Then as a horologue that called us, what time the bride of God is rising up, with matins to her spouse that he may love her, wherein one part the other draws and urges, ting, ting, resounding with so sweet a note, that swells with love the spirit well disposed. Thus I beheld the glorious wheel move round, and render voice to voice in modulation, and sweetness that cannot be comprehended, excepting there where joy is made eternal. End of Canto 10 Paradiso, Canto 11 O oh, thou insensate care of mortal men, how inclusive are the syllogisms that make thee beat thy wings in downward flight! One after laws and one to aphorisms was going, and one following the priesthood, and one to reign by force or sophistry, and one in theft, and one in state affairs, one in the pleasures of the flesh involved wearied himself, one gave himself to ease. When I, from all these things emancipate with Beatrice above there in the heavens, with such exceeding glory was received, when each one had returned unto that point, within the circle where it was before, it stood as in a candlestick a candle. And from within the effulgence which it first had spoken unto me, I heard begin, smiling while it more luminous became. Even as I am kindled in its ray, so looking into the eternal light, the occasion of thy thoughts I apprehend. Thou doubtest, and wouldst have me to resift in language so extended and so open my speech that to thy sense it may be plain where just before I said, where well one fattens, and where I said, there never rose a second, and here tis needful we distinguish well, the providence which governeth the world with counsel, wherein all created vision is vanquished ere it reach unto the bottom, so that towards her own beloved might go the bride of him, who uttering a loud cry espoused her with his consecrated blood, self-confident, and unto him more faithful. Two princes did ordain in her behoof, which on this side and that might be her guide, 
The one was all seraphical in ardor, the other by his wisdom upon earth a splendor was of light cherubical. One will I speak of, for both is spoken. In praising one, whichever may be taken, because unto one end their labors were. Between Tupino and the stream that falls, down from the hill elect of the blessed Ubald, a fertile slope of lofty mountain hangs, from which Perugia feels the cold and heat, through Porta Sole, and behind it weep Gualdo and Nocera their grievous yoke. From out that slope there where it breaketh most its steepness, rose upon the world a sun, as this one does sometimes from out of the Ganges. Therefore let him who speaketh of that place say not a chaise, for he will say little, but orient, if he properly would speak. He was not yet far distant from his rising, before he had begun to make the earth some comfort from his mighty virtue feel. For he in youth his father's wrath incurred, for certain dame to whom, as unto death, the gate of pleasure no one doth unlock, and was before his spiritual court et coram patre unto her united. Then day by day more fervently he loved her. She, reft of her first husband, scorned, obscure, one thousand and one hundred years and more, waited without suitor till he came. Naught it availed to hear that with Amiclas found her unmoved at sounding of his voice, he who struck terror into all the world. Naught it availed being constant and undaunted, so that when Mary still remained below, she mounted up with Christ upon the cross. But that too darkly I may not proceed, Francis in poverty for these two lovers, take thou henceforward in my speech diffuse. Their concord and their joyous semblances, the love, the wonder, and the sweet regard they made to be the cause of holy thoughts, so much so that the venerable Bernard first bared his feet, and after so great peace, ran, and in running thought himself too slow. O wealth unknown, O veritable good! Giles bears his feet, and bears his feet Sylvester, behind the bridegroom, so doth please the bride. Then goes his way that father and that master, he and his lady and that family, which now was girding on the humble cord. Nor cowardice of heart weighed down his brow, at being son of Peter Bernardone, nor for appearing marvelously scorned. But regally his hard determination to innocent he opened, and from him received the primal seal upon his order. After the people mendicant increased, behind this man whose admirable life better in glory of the heavens were sung, incoronated with a second crown, was through Honorius by the eternal spirit the holy purpose of this archimandrite. And when he had, through thirst of martyrdom, in the proud presence of the sultan preached, Christ and the others who came after him, and finding for conversion too unripe the folk, and not to tarry there in vain, returned a fruit of the Italic grass. On the rude rock twixt Tiber and the Arno, from Christ did he receive the final seal, which during two whole years his members bore, when he, who chose unto him so much good, was pleased to draw him up to the reward that he had merited by being lowly. Unto his friars, as to the rightful heirs, his most dear lady did he recommend, and bade that they should love her faithfully. And from her bosom the illustrious soul wished to depart, returning to its realm, and for its body wished no other beer. Think now what man was he, who was a fit companion over the high seas, to keep the bark of Peter to its proper bearings? And this man was our patriarch, hence whoever doth follow him as he commands can see that he is laden with good merchandise. But for new pasturage his flock has grown so greedy, that it is impossible they be not scattered over fields diverse. And in proportion as his sheep remote and vagabond go farther off from him, more void of milk return they to the fold. Verily some there are that fear a hurt, and keep close to the shepherd, but so few that little cloth doth furnish forth their hoods. Now if my utterance be not indistinct, if thine own hearing hath attentive been, if thou recall to mind what I have said, in part contented shall thy wishes be, for thou shalt see the plant that's chipped away, and the rebuke that lieth in the words where well one fattens, if he strayeth not. End of Canto 11 End of Paradiso, Canto 6 to Canto 11 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Jefferson City, Missouri The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Paradiso, Canto 6 to Canto 11.
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rosalind Wills of Silver Spring, Maryland, on September 22, 2006. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso, Canto 12 to Canto 16. Canto 12. Soon as the blessed flame had taken up the final word to give it utterance, began the holy millstone to revolve, and in its gyre had not turned wholly round before another in a ring enclosed it, and motion joined to motion, song to song. Song that as greatly doth transcend our muses, our sirens in those dulcet clarions, as primal splendor that which is reflected, and as our span doth thwart a tender cloud two rainbows parallel and like in color, when Juno to her handmaid gives command the one without born of the one within, like to the speaking of that vagrant one whom love consumed as doth the sun the vapors. And make the people here, through covenant, God set with Noah presageful of the world, that shall no more be covered with a flood. In such wise of those sempiternal roses the garlands twain encompassed us about, and thus the outer to the inner answered. After the dance and other grand rejoicings, both of the singing and the flaming forth, effulgence with effulgence, blithe and tender, together at once with one accord had stopped, even as the eyes that as volition moves them must needs together shut and lift themselves. Out of the heart of one of the new lights there came a voice, that needle to the star made me appear in turning thitherward. And it began, The love that makes me fair draws me to speak about the other leader, by whom so well is spoken here of mine. Tis right where one is to bring in the other, that as they were united in their warfare, together likewise may their glory shine. The soldiery of Christ, which it had cost so dear to arm again behind the standard, moved slow and doubtful and in numbers few. When the emperor who reigneth evermore provided for the host that was in peril, through grace alone and not that it was worthy. And as was said, he to his bride brought succor, with champions twain at whose deed, at whose word, the straggling people were together drawn. Within that region where the sweet west wind rises to open the new leaves, wherewith Europe is seen to clothe herself afresh, not far off from the beating of the waves behind which in his long career the sun sometimes conceals himself from every man, is situate the fortunate Calahora, under protection of the mighty shield in which the lion subject is and sovereign. Therein was born the amorous paramour of Christian faith, the athlete consecrate, kind to his own and cruel to his foes and when it was created was his mind replete with such a living energy that in his mother her it made prophetic. As soon as the espousals were complete between him and the faith at holy font, where they with mutual safety dowered each other, the woman who for him had given assent saw in a dream the admirable fruit that issue would from him and from his heirs, and that he might be construed as he was, a spirit from this place went forth to name him, with his possessive whose he wholly was. Dominic was he called, and him I speak of, even as of the husbandman whom Christ elected to his garden to assist him. Envoy and servant sooth he seemed of Christ, for the first love made manifest in him was the first counsel that was given by Christ. Silent and wakeful many a time was he, discovered by his nurse upon the ground, as if he would have said, For this I came. O thou his father, Felix verily, O thou his mother, verily Joanna, if this interpreted means as is said. Not for the world which people toil for now, in following Ostiense and Tadio, but through his longing after the true manner. He in short time became so great a teacher that he began to go about the vineyard, which fadeth soon if faithless be the dresser, and of the sea that once was more benignant unto the righteous poor, not through itself but him who sits there and degenerates, not to dispense or two or three for six, not any fortune of first vacancy, non decimas que sunt pauperum dei. He asked for, but against the errant world, permission to do battle for the seed, of which these four and twenty plants surround thee. Then with the doctrine and the will together, with office apostolical he moved, like torrent, which some lofty vein outpresses, and in among the shoots heretical his impetus with greater fury smote, wherever the resistance was the greatest. Of him were made thereafter diverse runnels, whereby the garden Catholic is watered, so that more living its plantations stand. 
of such the one wheel of the Bigo was, in which the holy church itself defended, and in the field its civic battle won. Truly full manifest should be to thee the excellence of the other, unto whom Thomas so courteous was before my coming. But still the orbit which the highest part of its circumference made is derelict, so that the mould is where was once the crust. His family that had straightforward moved with feet upon his footprints are turned round so that they set the point upon the heel. And soon aware they will be of the harvest of this bad husbandry, when shall the tares complain the granary is taken from them. Yet say I, he who searcheth leaf by leaf, our volume through would still some page discover where he could read, I am as I am wont. Twill not be from Casal nor Aquasparta, from whence comes such unto the written word that one avoids it and the other narrows. Bonaventura of Banyoregio's life am I, who always in great offices postponed considerations sinister. Here are Illuminato and Agostino, who of the first barefooted beggars were, that with the cord the friends of God became. Hugh of St. Victor is among them here, and Peter Mangiador and Peter of Spain, who down below in volumes twelve is shining. Nathan the seer, and Metropolitan Chrysostom, and Anselmus, and Donatus, who deigned to lay his hand to the first art. Here is Robanus, and beside me here shines the Calabrian abbot Joachim, he with the spirit of prophecy endowed. To celebrate so great a paladin have moved me the impassioned courtesy, and the discreet discourses of Friar Thomas, and with me they have moved this company. Canto thirteen. Let him imagine who would well conceive what now I saw, and let him while I speak retain the image as a steadfast rock. The fifteen stars that in their diverse regions the sky enliven with a light so great that it transcends all clusters of the air. Let him the wane imagine unto which our vault of heaven sufficeth night and day, so that in turning of its pole it fails not. Let him the mouth imagine of the horn, that in the point beginneth of the axis round about which the primal wheel revolves, to have fashioned of themselves two signs in heaven, like unto that which Minos's daughter made, the moment when she felt the frost of death, and one to have its rays within the other, and both to whirl themselves in such a manner that one should forward go, the other backward, and he will have some shadowing forth of that true constellation and the double dance that circled round the point at which I was. Because it is as much beyond our want as swifter than the motion of the Kiana, moveth the heaven that all the rest outspeeds. There sang they neither Bacchus nor Apollo, but in the divine nature persons three, and in one person the divine and human. The singing and the dance fulfilled their measure, and unto us those holy lights gave need, growing in happiness from care to care. Then broke the silence of those saints concordant, the light in which the admirable life of God's own mendicant was told to me and said, Now that one straw is trodden on, now that its seed is garnered up already, sweet love invites me to thresh out the other. Into that bosom thou believest whence was drawn the rib to form the beauteous cheek, whose taste to all the world is costing dear, and into that which by the lance transfixed before and since such satisfaction made that it weighs down the balance of all sin. Whate'er of light it has to human nature been lawful to possess was all infused by the same power that both of them created, and hence at what I said above dost wonder, when I narrated that no second had the good which in the fifth light is enclosed. Now ope thine eyes to what I answer thee, and thou shalt see thy creed and my discourse fit in the truth as centre in a circle. That which can die, and that which dieth not, are nothing but the splendour of the idea which by his love our Lord brings into being because that living light, which from its fount effulgent flows, so that it disunites not from him, nor from the love in them entrined, though its own goodness reunites its rays in nine subsistences, as in a mirror, itself eternally remaining one. Thence it descends to the last potencies, downward from act to act, becoming such that only brief contingencies it makes. And these contingencies I hold to be things generated, which the heaven produces by its own motion, with seed and without. Neither the wax nor that which tempers it remains immutable, and hence beneath the ideal signet more and less shines through. Therefore it happens that the self-same tree, after its kind, bears worse and better fruit, and ye are born with characters diverse. If in perfection tempered were the wax, and were the heaven in its supremest virtue, the brilliance of the seal would all appear. But nature gives it ever more deficient, 
in the like manner working as the artist who has the skill of art and hand that trembles. If then the fervent love, the vision clear, of primal virtue do dispose and seal, perfection absolute is there acquired. Thus was of old the earth created worthy of all and every animal perfection, and thus the virgin was impregnate made. So that thine own opinion I commend, that human nature never yet has been nor will be what it was in those two persons. Now if no farther forth I should proceed, then in what way was he without a peer, would be the first beginning of thy words. But that may well appear what now appears not. Think who he was, and what occasion moved him to make request, when it was told him, Ask. I have not so spoken that thou canst not see clearly he was a king who asked for wisdom, that he might be sufficiently a king. "'Twas not to know the number in which are the motors here above, "'or if necesse with a contingent air necesse make, "'non si es dare primo motum esse, "'or if in semicircle can be made triangle "'so that it have no right angle. "'Whence if thou notice this and what I said, "'a regal prudence is that peerless seeing "'in which the shaft of my intention strikes. "'And if on rose thou turnest thy clear eyes, "'thou'lt see that it has reference alone "'to kings who are many, and the good are rare.' With this distinction take thou what I said, and thus it can consist with thy belief of the first father and of our delight. And led shall this be always to thy feet, to make thee like a weary man move slowly, both to the yes and no thou seest not. For very low among the fools is he, who affirms without distinction, or denies as well in one as in the other case, because it happens that full often bends current opinion in the false direction, and then the feelings bind the intellect. Far more than uselessly he leaves the shore, since he returneth not the same he went, who fishes for the truth and has no skill. And in the world proofs manifest thereof, Parmenides, Melissus, Brissus are, and many who went on and knew not whither. Thus did Sibelius, Arius, and those fools who have been even as swords unto the scriptures, in rendering distorted their straight faces. Nor yet shall people be too confident in judging, even as he is who doth count the corn in field or ever it be ripe. For I have seen all winter long the thorn first show itself intractable and fierce, and after bear the rose upon its top. And I have seen a ship direct and swift run o'er the sea throughout its course entire to perish at the harbor's mouth at last. Let not Dame Bertha nor Sir Martin think, seeing one steal another offering make, to see them in the arbitrament divine. For one may rise and fall the other may. Canto fourteen. From center unto rim, from rim to center, in a round vase the water moves itself, as from without tis struck or from within. Into my mind upon a sudden dropped what I am saying at the moment when silent became the glorious life of Thomas, because of the resemblance that was born of his discourse and that of Beatrice, whom after him it pleased thus to begin. This man has need, and does not tell you so, nor with the voice nor even in his thought, of going to the root of one truth more. Declare unto him if the light wherewith blossoms your substance shall remain with you eternally the same that it is now. And if it do remain, say in what manner, after ye are again made visible, it can be that it injure not your sight. As by a greater gladness urged and drawn, they who are dancing in a ring sometimes uplift their voices and their motions quicken, so at that orison devout and prompt, the holy circles a new joy displayed in their revolving and their wondrous song. Whoso lamenteth him that here we die that we may live above, has never there seen the refreshment of the eternal reign. The one and two and three who ever liveth, and reigneth ever in three and two and one, not circumscribed in all things circumscribing. Three several times was chanted by each one among those spirits, with such melody that for all merit it were just reward. And in the luster most divine of all, the lesser ring, I heard a modest voice, such as perhaps the angels was to Mary, answer, As long as the festivity of paradise shall be, so long our love shall radiate round about us such a vesture. Its brightness is proportioned to the ardor, the ardor to the vision, and the vision equals what grace it has above its worth. When glorious and sanctified our flesh is reassumed, then shall our persons be more pleasing by their being all complete. For will increase whate'er bestows on us of light gratuitous the good supreme, light which enables us to look on him. Therefore the vision must perforce increase, increase the ardor which from that is kindled, increase the radiance which from this proceeds. 
but even as a coal that sends forth flame, and by its vivid whiteness overpowers it, so that its own appearance it maintains, thus the effulgence that surrounds us now shall be o'erpowered in aspect by the flesh, which still to-day the earth doth cover up. Nor can so great a splendor weary us, for strong will be the organs of the body to everything which hath the power to please us. So sudden and alert appeared to me both one and the other choir to say Amen, that well they showed desire for their dead bodies, nor saw for them, perhaps, but for the mothers, the fathers, and the rest who had been dear or ever they became eternal flames. And lo, all round about, of equal brightness, arose a luster over what was there, like a horizon that is clearing up. And as it rise of early eve begins along the welkin new appearances, so that the sight seems real and unreal, it seemed to me that new subsistences began there to be seen, and make a circle outside the other two circumferences. O oh, very sparkling of the Holy Spirit, how sudden and incandescent it became unto mine eyes that vanquished bore it not! But Beatrice, so beautiful and smiling, appeared to me, that with the other sights that followed not my memory I must leave her. Then to uplift themselves mine eyes resumed the power, and I beheld myself translated to higher salvation with my lady only. Well was I aware that I was more uplifted by the enkindled smiling of the star that seemed to me more ruddy than its wont. With all my heart, and in that dialect which is the same in all, such holocaust to God I made as the new grace beseemed, and not yet from my bosom was exhausted the ardor of sacrifice, before I knew this offering was accepted and auspicious. For with so great a luster and so red splendors appeared to me in twofold rays, I said, O oh, Helios, who dost so adorn them! Even as distinct with less and greater lights glimmers between the two poles of the world, the galaxy that maketh wise men doubt. Thus constellated in the depths of Mars those rays describe the venerable sign that quadrants joining in a circle make. Here doth my memory overcome my genius, for on that cross as leaven gleamed forth Christ, so that I cannot find in sample worthy. But he who takes his cross and follows Christ again will pardon me what I omit, seeing in that aurora lighten Christ." From horn to horn and twixt the top and base, lights were in motion, brightly scintillating as they together met and passed each other. Thus level and aslant and swift and slow, we here behold, renewing still the sight, the particles of bodies long and short. Across the sunbeam move, wherewith is listed sometimes the shade, which for their own defense people with cunning and with art contrive. And as a lute and harp, a cord and strung with many strings, a dulcet tinkling make, to him by whom the notes are not distinguished, so from the lights that there to me appeared, up gathered through the cross a melody, which wrapped me, not distinguishing the hymn. Well was I where it was of lofty laud, because there came to me, Arise and conquer, as unto him who hears and comprehends not. So much enamoured I became therewith, that until then there was not anything that air had fettered me with such sweet bonds. Perhaps my word appears somewhat too bold, postponing the delight of those fair eyes into which gazing my desire has rest. But who bethinks him that the living seals of every beauty grow in power ascending, and that I there had not turned round to those, can me excuse if I myself accuse to excuse myself, and see that I speak truly? For here the holy joy is not disclosed, because ascending it becomes more pure. Canto 15 a will benign in which reveals itself ever the love that righteously inspires, as in the iniquitous cupidity, silence imposed upon that dulcet lyre and quieted the consecrated chords that heaven's right hand doth tighten and relax. How unto just entreaty shall be deaf those substances which, to give me desire of praying them, with one accord grew silent? Tis well that without end he should lament, who for the love of thing that doth not last eternally despoils him of that love. As through the pure and tranquil evening air there shoots from time to time a sudden fire, moving the eyes that steadfast were before, and seems to be a star that changeth place, except that in the part where it is kindled nothing is missed, and this endureth little. So from the horn that to the right extends unto that cross's foot there ran a star, out of the constellation shining there, nor was the gem dissevered from its ribbon, but down the radiant fillet ran along, so that fire seemed it behind alabaster. Thus piteous did Anchises' shade reach forward, if any faith our greatest muse deserve, when in Elysium he his son perceived. 
O sanguis meus, o superinfusa gratia dei, sicut tibi, qui bis unquam coeli janua reclusa. Thus that effulgence whence I gave it heed, then round unto my lady turned my sight, and on this side and that was stupefied, for in her eyes was burning such a smile, that with mine own methought I touched the bottom both of my grace and of my paradise. Then pleasant to the hearing and the sight, the spirit joined to its beginning things I understood not, so profound it spake. Nor did it hide itself from me by choice, but by necessity, for its conception above the mark of mortals set itself. And when the bow of burning sympathy was so far slackened, that its speech descended towards the mark of our intelligence, the first thing that was understood by me was, Benedite be thou, O trine and one, who hast unto my seed so courteous been. And it continued, Hunger long and grateful, drawn from the reading of the mighty volume wherein is never changed the white nor dark, thou hast appeased my son within this light, in which I speak to thee, by grace of her who to this lofty flight with plumage clothed thee. Thou thinkest that to me thy thought doth pass from him who is the first, as from the unit, if that be known, ray out the five and six. And therefore, who I am thou askest not, and why I seem more joyous unto thee than any other of this gladsome crowd. Thou thinkst the truth, because the small and great of this existence look into the mirror, wherein before thou thinkst thy thought thou showest. But that the sacred love in which I watch with sight perpetual, and which makes me thirst with sweet desire, may better be fulfilled. Now let thy voice secure and frank and glad proclaim the wishes, the desire proclaim to which my answer is decreed already. To Beatrice I turned me, and she heard before I spake and smiled to me a sign that made the wings of my desire increase. Then in this wise began I. Love and knowledge, when on you dawned the first equality, of the same weight for each of you became. For in the sun which lighted you and burned with heat and radiance, they so equal are that all similitudes are insufficient. But among mortals will and argument, for reason that to you is manifest, diversely feathered in their opinions are. Whence I, who mortal am, feel in myself this inequality, so give not thanks save in my heart for this paternal welcome. Truly do I entreat thee, living topaz, set in this precious jewel as a gem, that thou wilt satisfy me with thy name. O leaf of mine, in whom I pleasure took, e'en while awaiting, I was thine own root. Such a beginning he in answer made me, then said to me, That one from whom is named thy race, and who a hundred years and more has circled round the mount on the first cornice, a son of mine and thy great-grandsire was, well it behoves thee that the long fatigue thou shouldst for him make shorter with thy works. Florence, within the ancient boundary, from which she taketh still her tears and nones, abode in quiet, temperate, and chaste. No golden chain she had, nor coronal, nor lady shod with sandal shoon, nor girdle that caught the eye more than the person did. Not yet the daughter at her birth struck fear into the father, for the time and dower did not o'errun this side or that the measure. No houses had she void of families, nor yet had thither come Sardanapalus, to show what in a chamber can be done. Not yet surpassed had Montemallo been by your Uselitojo, which surpassed shall in its downfall be as in its rise. Belincion Berti saw I go begirt with leather and with bone, and from the mirror his dame depart without a painted face. And him of Nerli saw, and him of Vecchio, contented with their simple suits of buff, and with the spindle and the flax their dames. O oh, fortunate women! And each one was certain of her own burial place, and none as yet for sake of France was in her bed deserted. One o'er the cradle kept her studious watch, and in her lullaby the language used that first delights the fathers and the mothers. Another, drawing tresses from her distaff, told o'er among her family the tales of Trojans and of Fessole and Rome. As great a marvel, then, would have been held a Lapo Saltarello, a Chiangela, as Cincinnatus or Cornelia now. To such a quiet, such a beautiful life of the citizen, to such a safe community, and to so sweet an inn, did Mary give me, with loud cries invoked, and in your ancient baptistry at once, Christian and Cassia Guida I became. Moronto was my brother, and Eliseo, from Val di Pado, came to me my wife, and from that place thy surname was derived. 
I followed afterward the Emperor Conrad, and he begirt me of his chivalry, so much I pleased him with my noble deeds. I followed in his train against that law's iniquity, whose people doth usurp your just possession through your pastor's fault. Thereby that execrable race was I released from bonds of the fallacious world, the love of which defileth many souls, and came from martyrdom unto this place. Canto 16 O thou our poor nobility of blood, if thou dost make the people glory in thee, down here where our affection languishes, a marvellous thing it ne'er will be to me, for there where appetite is not perverted, I say in heaven, of thee I made a boast. Truly thou art a cloak that quickly shortens, so that unless we piece thee day by day, time goeth round about thee with his shears. With you, which Rome was first to tolerate, wherein her family less perseveres, yet once again my words beginning made, whence Beatrice, who stood somewhat apart, smiling, appeared like unto her who coughed at the first failing writ of Guinevere. And I began, You are my ancestor, you give to me all hardihood to speak, you lift me so that I am more than I. So many rivulets with gladness fill my mind, that of itself it makes a joy, because it can endure this and not burst. Then tell me, my beloved root ancestral, who were your ancestors, and what the years that in your boyhood chronicled themselves? Tell me about the sheepfold of St. John, how large it was, and who the people were within it worthy of the highest seats. As at the blowing of the winds a coal quickens to flame, so I beheld that light become resplendent at my blandishments. And as unto mine eyes it grew more fair, with voice more sweet and tender, but not in this modern dialect, it said to me, From uttering of the Ave till the birth in which my mother, who is now a saint, of me was lightened, who had been her burden. Unto the lion had this fire returned, five hundred fifty times and thirty more, to re-inflame itself beneath his paw. My ancestors and I our birthplace had, where first is found the last ward of the city, by him who runneth in your annual game. Suffice it of my elders to hear this, but who they were and whence they thither came, silence is more considerate than speech. All those who at that time were there between Mars and the Baptist, fit for bearing arms, were a fifth part of those who now are living. But the community that now is mixed with Campi and Sertaldo and Ficine, pure in the lowest artisan was seen. Oh, how much better twere to have as neighbors the folk of whom I speak, and at Galuzzo, and at Trespiano have your boundary, than have them in the town, and bear the stench of Aguglione's churl, and him of Signa, who has sharp eyes for trickery already. Had not the folk which most of all the world degenerates been a stepdame unto Caesar, but as a mother to her son benignant, some who turn Florentines, and trade and discount, would have gone back again to Simifonte, there where their grandsires went about as beggars. At Monte Morlo still would be the Counts, the Serci and the parish of Acone, perhaps in Valdegrieve, the Buen del Monte. Ever the intermingling of the people has been the source of malady in cities, as in the body food it surfeits on. And a blind bull more headlong plunges down than a blind lamb, and very often cuts better and more a single sword than five. If Luni thou regard, and Orbisaglia, how they have passed away, and how are passing Chiusi and Sinigaglia after them, to hear how races waste themselves away will seem to thee no novel thing nor hard, seeing that even cities have an end. All things of yours have their mortality, even as yourselves, but it is hidden in some, that a long while endure and lives are short. And as the turning of the lunar heaven covers and bears the shores without a pause, in the like manner fortune does with Florence. Therefore should not appear a marvellous thing what I shall say of the great Florentines, of whom the fame is hidden in the past. I saw the Uchi, saw the Catalini, Filippi, Gressi, Ormani, and Alberici, even in their fall illustrious citizens, and saw as mighty as they ancient were, with him of La Sanella, him of Arca, and Soldanier, and Ardinghi, and Bostici. Near to the gate that is at present laden with a new felony of so much weight that soon it shall be jetsome from the bark, the Ravignani were from whom descended the county Guido, and where the name of the great Bellincione since hath taken. He of La Presa knew the art of ruling already, and already Galigaggio had hilt and pommel gilded in his house. Mighty already was the column there, Sacchetti, Giuoci, Fifant and Barucci, and Galli, 
and they who for the bushel blush. The stock from which were the Calfucci born was great already, and already chosen to curule chairs the Sizi and Ariguchi. Oh, how beheld I those who are undone by their own pride, and how the balls of gold Florence and flowered in all their mighty deeds! So likewise did the ancestors of those who evermore, when vacant is your church, fatten by staying and consistory. The insolent race that like a dragon follows whoever flees, and unto him that shows his teeth or purse, is gentle as a lamb, already rising was, but from low people, so that it pleased not Uberton Donato, that his wife's father should make him their kin. Already had Caponsacco to the market, from Fessol descended, and already Giuda and Infangato were good burghers. I'll tell a thing incredible but true. One entered the small circuit by a gate, which from the della Pera took its name. Each one that bears the beautiful escutcheon of the great baron whose renown and name the festival of Thomas keepeth fresh, knighthood and privilege from him received, though with the populace unites himself, to-day the man who binds it with a border. Already were Gualterotti and Importuni, and still more quiet would the Borgo be, if with new neighbors it remained unfed. The house from which is born your lamentation, through just disdain that death among you brought and put an end unto your joyous life, was honored in itself and its companions. O Buon del Monte, how in evil hour thou fledst the bridal at another's promptings! Many would be rejoicing who are sad if God had thee surrendered to the Ima the first time that thou camest to the city. But it behoved the mutilated stone which guards the bridge that Florence should provide a victim in her latest hour of peace. With all these families and others with them, Florence beheld I in so great repose that no occasion had she whence to weep. With all these families beheld so just and glorious her people that the lily never upon the spear was placed reversed nor by division was vermilion made. End of The Divine Comedy Paradiso, Cantos 12-16, to by Dante Alighieri, and translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow.